Hello, Ted here from Whole Latte Love. Uh, I'm going to be going over the anatomy of a brew group in case you ever need to know what the brew group is or how it works or anything like that. Also known as the brew unit. Um, you might call it something else, but brew group and brew unit are the two most common things used. And we're also going to learn how to clean this thing up, dude. Yes, we're going to le minute. learn how to clean it, when to clean it, uh, and that'll be later on after I get through the anatomy of it. Okay, just so folks know, you're like the lead tech here at Whole Lot They Love. You've probably been inside more gaja machines than anybody in the world, done more repairs, right? Yeah, I've been here just about 12 and a half years, uh, main repair tech for most of the gaja machines. So yeah, I've been in quite a few of them. All right, let's get to it. Let's take a look. What is this thing made up of? Okay, so the brew group, they're all the same kind of mechanism, body, housing, whatever you want to call it, but they are basically all the same. The only difference between any of the brew groups is the actual top, for the most part, where the valve is. This one's a little bit different. This is from an older machine, which they don't really have anymore, but I'm just trying to show the example of the different valves that might be on the top of the machine, okay. or on top of the brew group. But for the most part, you can see that they're all pretty much identical. This one's just got a bigger cup on the back end of it, and uh, otherwise, they're all identical. Some of them newer had these yellow components on them. Um, I don't know why, but that they decided to put yellow components in them. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the brew groups are all the same. They all have similar components, just different valves. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to go over is basically some of the components on the brew group so you can understand how it works. So right here, one, you got your thumb trigger. That is basically to help you remove the brew unit from the machine. When you open the door, for instance, on a machine, that's the first thing that you see. And that's just to tell you which it tells you in the manual to push this to remove the brew group from the machine. I'll let you get it out of there. Let you get it out. Okay. And what that does is when you hit that trigger is on the back side, this little flag thing, which is also called a... Uh, shark fin? Yeah, we like mm -hmm. to help customers on <laughs> navigate and find it by explaining that it looks like a shark fin or a flag. Okay. Um, so usually this is in the down position. Mm -hmm. So when you hit this trigger on the other side, you see it pop up. And that is to help you remove the brew group. So when this is in the down position, it won't let you remove the brew group. Okay. That's why you need to hit this trigger on the other side. And is it, where does it have to be if you want to put it back in the machine, right? If you actually, like, w once you get it out, sometimes you might bump it or it drops on its own by accident or whatever it may be. You always want to, before you install your brew unit back in, you want to make sure this thing is up. And it just clicks into place. So if you can't get it in, that's the first thing to check. Yeah, If what it will the happen is up. if it's in the down position, this little part here will be hitting something on the inside where it's not supposed to. And you'll like bang around and try to get it in there and it won't go in. Okay. So your first thing you want to check is to make sure that it's up. Okay. Okay. So then you have your valve on top of the brew group. As I explained, some of them are different. They have, you know, they're all basically the same kind of concept. They work as a one-way valve. Okay. Uh, so this is where the coffee and water mix basically down in here and it comes out here and eventually comes out the front of your machine depending on the machine. There's an inlet on the inside that, you know, goes into this thing and supplies the front spout with your, your espresso. Okay. Um, in here we have a shower screen. Uh, this, we're going to go into detail uh, in the cleaning, but basically you want to get that cleaned every now and then it can get some buildup in there. Uh, then this is the piston, which the, you know, the whole mechanism, the brew group goes up and compacts your grounds, and that's when it starts brewing water through it after it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have an O-ring right here, which you need to keep an eye on, and we'll get into that with the cleaning video also. Okay. But when we are talking about an O-ring on the brew group, this is the one that we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then inside of here, I don't know how easily you're going to be able to see it, but on both sides there's what's called the track. This mm -hmm. thing right here where my finger's sliding in front of, that track is how the mechanism, when the, the gear activates, moves all the components up and down. This will be more explained in the cleaning video, but I just want to point them out. They're on both sides, that whole track that goes up and down in the middle here, and it also has a slot that goes that way. Learn how to lubricate that, yep. right? Okay. That's what helps your whole mechanism move. Mm -hmm. after the machine activates the gear that goes inside of here. So where does my coffee go in here? So your coffee yeah. goes into this cup uh, area right here. The top of the shower screen, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So th this is a cup that eventually this part here, mm -hmm. uh, which we explain as a cup or a chalice looking thing on the back side of the brew group, 
This slides up inside of, wasn't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it out. So it slides up into that thing right there. So a little cup goes up, up around that. Yeah, once the mechanism starts moving, it, this moves forward and then goes up and that goes into that spout. And the water comes through that spout through this mechanism here mm -hmm. into the chamber where your grounds are. All right. Mm -hmm. So when your grinds are in here, it moves the grinds forward, mm -hmm. slides up, water goes through into that area where your grinds are, into, through the shower screen that's in the piston. Mm -hmm. And then your extracted coffee comes through this one-way valve mm -hmm. out this inlet, mm -hmm. and then which then connects to the inlet neck in the machine. Up in there, okay. And that goes straight to your spout. Okay. Okay, so that's how your coffee is made in the brew group, how the, the whole thing works, basically. Anything else you should know about this guy? Um, basically, that is the majority of the things on the brew group. Uh, the oh, the super basic maintenance, right? Yeah, the super basic. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Um, so on a weekly uh, basis, you want to rinse this brew group off, uh, whatever brew group you have in your machine. Uh, weekly, you want to rinse it off, get any of the debris off of it. Uh, and then just wash it off uh, and get it so that you don't have any stuff causing problems around it. But no soap, right? You just take no this dish sink soap. under running tap water. Yep, you don't want to use dish soap. Dish soap can possibly cause problems with the brew group. It also cause a bad flavor to your coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, don't also use the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not made to be used in a dishwasher and it can cause damage to components on it. So just rinse, so just rinse under it under water. hot water, cold water, whatever you want to use. It's just you're, you're flushing off any of the loose debris that might be okay. on it. Shake it off, let it dry. Shake it off, let it dry. Uh, you want to let it dry. Like weekly use, you know, at some point in the weekly use, you just rinse it off. Uh, probably, you know, after you're done using it for whatever day you plan on doing this. Mm -hmm. And then you can just set it into a dish strainer and let it completely dry off before inserting it back into the machine. And when you're taking it out, do you want to take a look inside the machine and get any grounds out of there as well? I yeah, I mean, you might get some. I mean, it's not going to be 100% all the time in the cup, you know. Sure. You know, the, we got a little scraper mm -hmm. that, you know, when it moves forward, this little scraper knocks the puck off. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might, you know, break apart. But it's whatever. perfectly normal to get a little yeah. ground coffee. And then sometimes when this mechanism moves forward, if there's too many grinds in this cup area right here, mm -hmm. you can see how it's skimming this opening right here. Right. So your grinds might be too much in there, and it'll skim off the back and then get all over the back of the machine and back into here. And some of the machines have like a little tray below the group that yep. catches some of that. Some yeah, don't. Yeah, this one's got like this little tray here. Okay. So um, just clean that out area out, right, of any yeah. crimes? Just weekly, I would say weekly, do the complete rinsing of this brew group and then clean out your, your chamber area here for the brew group. All right. And that'll prevent a lot of problems from happening. But that's the basic anatomy of a uh, brew group. You got all these things that I just went over. Uh, mm -hmm. The main heart of the machine, other than your beans and your water and your heat and everything, is this thing here where it puts all that together so you can get your espresso out of there. All right, so we'll take a break and we're going to take a look at how to do the maintenance on this, right? Yep, we're going to go through how to do a, a little bit more of a thorough cleaning on the brew group and help you make sure that you don't have any problems with it. Perfect. All right, so we are basically going to go over how I and maybe customers should do this also, uh, clean and lubricate the brew groups the, the best way I think is or the easiest way for people to do. Um, so basically what we need to do is we need to show how to grease all the components inside of here. Uh, not like all inside, but there's mm -hmm. areas of the brew group that need to be greased and cleaned out a little bit. Now let's talk about how often this should be done. Tuck. So this should be done uh, depending on basically usage. So if you use the machine once to like four or five times a day, you're going to want to do this uh, probably every three or four months. If you use it like five to 10, 15 times a day, you're gonna wanna do it probably two or three months down the road. If you use this thing like crazy every day, like 10 times or more, 20 times a day, you're gonna wanna do this deep cleaning, lubrication of the brew unit once a month probably. So it's based on what you're using the machine. Just keep in mind that if you're using it heavily, you're gonna wanna do this a lot sooner. If you're using it very lightly, you've got like four or five, maybe six months tops, I'd push it 
before you have to really do this uh, brew group cleaning and lubrication. So really just based on your usage level and yeah. some common sense. Yeah, right? and you can kind of see it being used in the brew group. Like this one is a relatively newer brew unit. It's a little dirty, but you can see the grease and stuff in there. I don't know if you can actually see oh, that, yeah. Yeah. but it's a little shiny and greasy looking. That's the grease inside there. So as long as you look something and similar. And you want some grease. <laughs> yeah, you want it to be greasy yeah. uh, and shiny like that. I mean, the other option is this one you can see is completely bone dry. There's no grease in here whatsoever on any of the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, and that what that does is it causes it to be extremely difficult to move. Okay. So the machine has a harder time doing that, which can cause other things to happen with the machine. All right. So to prevent, you know, uh, things from going wrong, uh, proper function of the brew unit, you want to do this. Uh, depending on usage, like I said, is how frequently you need to do this. And there's things like if you don't do this, you'd be getting some leaks, and we'll take a look inside the yeah. machine and different if things. If you're not doing happen. this, I can point out a couple things that will right. happen. All right, let's go through it. All then. right, so the first thing that you want to do is all machines have this same kind of brew unit. They have different types of valves on the top of them. Mm -hmm. So the main thing I want to drive into people's skulls <laughs> is okay. that you want to make sure that this valve goes back on the correct way because we're going to remove these valves to help you clean this part of the, the brew unit a lot easier. And it is very important in the direction, no matter what kind of valve, either this round spherical one or this long neck looking thing, it has to point in a certain direction. So the inlet here is pointing this way on this one. The inlet here is pointing that way on this one. So mm -hmm. keep in mind what it is. Write it down, jot it down, <laughs> take a picture, whatever you got to do, because you're going to make sure this is done and put back correctly, or else you're going to be brewing coffee inside your machine. So we're going to take those screws off and take that off of yes. there, and you can put it on backwards. Yeah, really we're going to take the valve off so All we right. can remove this head part, because you mm -hmm. can't remove this without this being removed. Okay, let's do so it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. What you're going to want to use is a what's called a T10 or Torx T10 bit. Mm -hmm. It's a star-shaped thing. I don't know if you can yep, see that, but... It. Um, it's a T10. They're all like that. Very rare. You'll run into ones where a Phillips head is the... Uh, the screw, but you fill yeah. and most people have those. It's the right. T10 that most people okay. do not have. So no matter what valve, you're going to just remove these two screws. And we're just going to, and they're usually a longer screw mm -hmm. uh, than mo majority of screws on the machine or in the brew group or anywhere. And you can see how long it is. It's like okay. an inch, inch and a half long. Don't lose your screws. Do not lose your screws. <laughs> Make for a bad um, day. I mean, even you know when I'm working on a bench, I'll get going, and sometimes my screw will fall off or my bench, and I'll lose it because I have so much stuff around, and I just have to go get another screw, which luckily I can do. But customers won't be able to do that. So just keep an eye on it. If you have a little dish you want to put them in, just do that. Sure. Anything for that matter. So now we got the screws out. On this one here, this weird neck-shaped guy, you want to make sure you hold this down when you remove the screws because there's a spring inside of here. Okay. Sometimes it might pop it right off. Other time, most time it won't because there, there's an actual seal right mm -hmm. here that prevents this from sliding up and down. It okay. also causes. Show it me how that came off of there again. I, yeah, it kind of just. So it, it just bit. it's a sleeve that goes into a hole. Okay. And once the screws are out, I just wiggled it to get okay. it to work out from the hole and then pop it off. And then there's that spring in there. And then there's the spring that can sometimes push this off depending okay. on how dry this thing okay. is. But that seal right there prevents water leaking and also prevents it from popping off, of course. Okay. So once we get that off, this kind of valve, we need to make sure that spring mm -hmm. and ball doesn't come flying out of there. There's a ball. little spherical ball in the bottom, oh, okay. which we're going to show here in a second. I'm going to tip this forward and dump them into my hand. There's the ball. There's the ball. Don't lose that. <laughs> Don't lose the ball. That guy is very easy to lose. I've done it many a times. Okay. Uh, so make sure you get that ball, set it into your tray or dish or something. We're going to put it right here in the middle of this O-ring so it can't go anywhere. Can't roll away like that. And then the spring. Okay. Okay. So that removes the valve from the top of this brewing net. This guy doesn't have a spring or ball. You, when you undo the screws, you can literally just pull that off and that is it. That's all you got to do. That's, oh, there's okay. no spring or nothing. The valve and stuff is inside the spherical thing. Okay. Now, should I be cleaning up the spring or this ball? Or um, maybe the ball. The ball yeah. sometimes get a little bit of debris build up around the opening that it sits into. Mm -hmm. and it causes a little ring, and that ring sometimes can get the ball to seize up. Okay. So, yes, it would be a good idea to kind of just get it rinse it off, off. And try not to lose it while you're doing <laughs> yeah. it. But, you know, just take a look at it, see if there's any, like, a ring of coffee debris on it. Okay. 
Um, so now that the valve is out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the head. This is the, called the head of the brew unit. Okay. And on each side, there's these little tabs right here mm -hmm. on the front and the back. So there's four of those? There's four tabs. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. What we need to do is we need to push. I usually use my two thumbs in my hand. So you're doing one side at a time? Kind one of? side at a time. And I'm going to push down to get it to slide past those tabs. Okay. Right? And while I'm holding this side down with my one hand, mm -hmm. I'm going to push in with these tabs one at a time to get it to start going down. Okay. And by the time I get to the fourth one, it's going to automatically pop down past that fourth tab. Okay. So the key is to hold down the one side and then work the other side once you get the one side okay. down. Now that we're past the tabs, you can see it's dropped down a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's no longer flush with these. We're going to slide it down and we're going to pull it out. And that is basically all you have to do to remove this. And then okay. this will make it a lot easier for you to clean the shower screen. Now that one's pretty clean, right? It's not bad. Okay. Uh, but they all don't look that bad unless you take the screen off. Oh, okay. So we're going to take the screen off, which is also a T10 screw, a okay. lot shorter. A lot shorter. Don't lose it. And we're going to flip it over. And most okay. time it'll dro just drop out. Okay. Sometimes it might be a lot of debris in there and it'll make it stick in there and you just got to tap okay. it and break it out of there. But you can see that there's coffee residue on the back of this one. Okay. It's not bad, actually. This one's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen quite a few where there's a lot more film oh. built up in there. And then what happens is all these little tiny holes, which I don't know if you can see it or not, yeah. they're laser cut holes. And when the film gets built up, the coffee residue film gets built up in here, it plugs those holes. And I don't know if I can show this on video, but when you, you you're going to want to hold this screen up to a light, a very bright mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the tiny holes through it. So if you're not seeing through the holes... If you're not seeing through the holes, it's yeah. plugged up. Okay. Or you can see how much it is plugged up, because you'll see some of the holes, but not a hole. Okay. So but you want to hold it up to a very bright light. Let's I don't see. know if you can see that or not, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. So if any of those are plugged up, you'll see it through the light. Okay. Okay. This one's not plugged up, as you could see in the video. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's times where that'll have a lot of buildup in it. Okay. So and what you're going to want to... clean behind yeah. there as well? Yeah. So... When you get this off, what I like to use is called Coquine. Mm -hmm. We can also use Kafiza. You got that over here. So yeah. anything that helps clean and dissolve coffee residue, uh, but my favorite is the Coquine. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take this little screen, I'll set it in a very small dish or some kind of thing that I can sit it in mm -hmm. to hold a little liquid, and I'll spray a bunch of that in there just so there's enough liquid to cover the screen. And when that happens, you can just let it sit there and you can work on the rest of the brew group. It only takes a couple minutes to clean that off. Um, and then you can rinse it off and check the holes and make sure it's all cleared up and everything. Okay. Uh, and if you're comfortable with how clean it is, then you can go ahead and start putting it back together at that point. Okay. But yeah, I try cleaning up around here. You can see I got a little coffee residue yep. on my finger from just doing that. This isn't really going to cause any major problems, but if I can clean it while I'm there, might, might. as well do it. Same with this around here. You can clean this up and just kind of wipe it down. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. So, and then the other thing you're going to do is after you clean everything, if you need to change your O-ring, go mm -hmm. ahead and change it. Um, this will tend to dry out over time. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that can happen is the coffee ground buildup sometimes that gets in here, uh, starts tearing away at it. And then what happens is it no longer creates a seal when that cup part comes up and compresses into it and it starts leaking out around it. Okay. Okay, so just keep an eye on your ring. If it starts looking like it needs to be replaced or needs some help or whatever, we have new ones that you can purchase this by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, or we have this have full kit over there, brew right? group service kit. Which comes with a couple of those O-rings? It comes with two of these guys, and it comes with this bigger one, which I've never seen or never used before, so there must be brew units out there that have a bigger piston on them, a uh, little tube of grease, and a uh, whatever you call these pipe, pipe cleaner, cleaner. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've seen one in a long time yeah. so the pipe cleaner helps you clean out a channel inside the brew group area which we'll show in a second okay uh, and then the grease also and then the old rings okay so replace your ring if it needed after you replace it and add, again, it's just if it's looking if it looks damaged, like it's tearing loose. and drying out because mm. it'll start cracking okay you'll see like little lines like wrinkle lines basically uh, it's drying out. Okay. It's rubber, so eventually it dries out. Rubber, silicone, whatever. Okay. Um, but eventually it goes bad. 
especially the more it's used, of course. Um, so just replace this, you know, keep an eye on it, replace it maybe every three or four months, I would suggest, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, but just keep an eye on it. Okay. Uh, once you do replace the O-ring, you're going to use the little tube of grease and the brush that comes with your machine. Mm -hmm. If you don't have these, you can always get these also on, on our website. Um, but you're going to put a little grease on here. It doesn't need a lot, and you're just going to spread it around this O-ring, mm -hmm. just enough to coat it. You're just okay. going to get enough on there so it has an, the cup an easy time. Just to film, right? Yeah. You're not goofing Yeah, you don't want to like slop it on there and have all okay. sorts of crap all over it. You just want to skim a little bit around there and kind of, if you want, you can rub your finger around it and just kind of get some smeared on it. Okay. And it makes it easier for the cup to go up in there. Okay. And, you know, it'll help everything else. Um, so that's it for that, okay? This part, now that we have the head out of the way, you can see a little bit easier the tracks right here. Mm -hmm. It goes this way, and then there's one that actually goes that way behind the ramp. And that's where we want to grease and That's these. where you want to grease. It also continues down here, which is where you also want to grease also. Right and those right exist on both sides, on right? both Just sides. mirror images over there, kind of. Yep, yep, right there. Okay. Same here, and then there's and the then one that goes that way. That way. And you just use the brush to get some grease on there? Yeah. You can also move the mechanism if you really want to, but it doesn't really make okay. anything easier. But Now, this one's got a lot, of, a, a little bit of coffee. Uh, yeah, this in one there. was in a machine that was being used uh, off and on. So you can mm -hmm. see there is some coffee debris and stuff in here. You can clean this off Definitely if you want to. Sure. Uh, you can rinse this out. You can see there's a little coffee smudge down in here. Um, now, if I've still got grease in there, do I need to re worry about removing the old grease or should I just not be greasing it or? Um, you really won't, I mean, if there is some grease in there, it's just o over time grease, basically. Okay. It's not It's not going to hurt anything. It's always good to add a little bit more, especially if the tracks look like they're really dry. I mean, this one's starting to dry out. I don't know mm -hmm. if you can see it, but they're usually pretty gooped up. Okay. Um, I don't know if this one, yeah, this one's got a little, you can see the edges are shiny yep. and the track is all clear. So that's got enough in there? That is. The way it should be. Yes. Okay. This is out of a brand new machine. Okay. So. Okay. But you can All see right. the difference between the two, and you want to make sure these tracks are greased up, um, yeah. depending on usage, like I said earlier. Um, but you definitely want to make sure these are greased because okay. this is what your mechanism works off from. And okay. the drier this is, the harder the machine has to work. And if that has to work, it can cause malfunction of parts. It can cause. Um, errors, mm -hmm. it can cause uh, dosing problems, Okay. Uh, for example, on a few things. So you want to make sure this is done. So like if you haven't a, done that in months and you're you, having some issues, if this you're, yeah. might be a really good solution If your machine is you. throwing up errors, mm -hmm. uh, brew group something, or you have This is a good place with, to start? Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, even with flow issues, I mean, if this screen is plugged up or your valve is stuck or something like that, it won't allow water to come through as easily as it should. Okay. And that's going to cause your coffee to come out the front, like slowly or not at all, or whatever it may be. But this is a good area to start. The brew unit is usually the culprit for most of the problems. Now, putting this back together, are we are we to the point? So once this is all yeah. cleaned up, and we can put so it back together. So once you clean this area up, no dish soap, just water. You kind of rinse it out a little bit, grease your tracks. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, one other thing you want to grease is back here. You can kind of see a little bit on here. It's this bar pin thing right okay. here. Okay. Uh, it's probably easier to see there. on the newer one, yeah, right there. Okay. You just dab a little grease on both of these um, spots here. Okay. It just helps this mechanism move a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, but yeah, d uh, put a little grease here, a little grease on the tracks, in the, in the track that goes that way. You don't have to go like real okay. far. Right. You know, you just take your brush and you kind of just brush do that. Okay. And then move your brush up and down here and just get a little grease in there. So yeah, track, track track on both sides. Now, should we put this back together real yep. quick? Okay. So once you get all the cleaning and the greasing done, we're going to put this back together real quick. Now, the key thing, like I said earlier, is making sure that this head is put back on the correct way. Now, you can see this is the way that it came off. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. I remember. I'm <laughs> pretty confident that's the way it came off. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention, which is why you should be paying attention. Yes. Uh, but if you don't pay attention, you can put it on this way. Okay. You see how the screw and the hole change direction? Yep. Okay. So if I put it on this way, and I'm not going to lock it in all the way because I want to pop it off real easily. One, I might be able to get it to go on the way it's supposed to. 
Actually, it won't be able to because yeah. it won't even line up correctly because the stuff is in the way. But if I put it on the way that you know it does work, it's now your valve is facing the wrong way. Okay. On this one specifically. So again, make note of which way that valve yep. comes off. So this head has to be on a certain way for this valve to be put okay. on the correct way. To take your picture or whatever. So we're going to put it on the correct way. And all you got to do is you know, slide it up in that track and let those tabs lock it into place. Okay. So now it's not moving. Okay. And you're going to take your valve. Well, on this we one, need, you need your ball and your spring. Ball and spring. And again, your unit may not have it. If yeah, we you may not this have type. this. It'll more likely have this. Okay. This is, so this is a newer design over here on the right? No, they use or this just... style on you know, some of the machines also. I okay. think there's a reason why they use the two different valves depending okay. on machine. I don't know the specifics as to why they use these two different valves, but mm -hmm. there's got to be a reason for so it. So you already dropped the ball on Yeah, there? the ball, you just drop it in there, and the spring is cone-shaped. Okay. Ah, I see. Wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. So wide so and in? Or the thinner in. Thinner in. Thinner yeah, because the ball okay. has to set in on the spring. Okay. If you put this end in first, your ball is going to go in the spring. Okay. And so it's not going to hold it closed or open properly. So we're going to stick the thinner end. So the in. thinner end goes in first, and you just drop it in there. Okay. Okay. So when you go to put this on, make sure your seal is still there. Okay. Most time it doesn't come off, but just keep in mind that there is an O-ring on the end of this neck. Okay. And you're going to put the neck in there, and you're going to wiggle it in there, and then you're going to get it to go down into position. Now, most time it'll just sit there, and you can, or not. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. That's That'll happen. Idea. That's why I was mentioning now, earlier. We also didn't put the shower screen on there, which we oh, would yeah. have done, right? I'm sorry, I got <laughs> sidetracked there. But yeah, put your shower screen on first. With uh, the short screw. Yep, with the short screw before putting this whole head back okay. on there. But yeah, that was a good, a good example as to why... <laughs> I, you kind of hold it. You maybe. need to hold it when you're taking the screws out because that can happen. But yeah, you want to put the screws into the hole and just get them both started. You can let go at that point if you want. I mean, it'll probably yeah. pop up, but at least yeah. it's not going to fly off on you. That spring's a lot more powerful than I would have expected. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go down. I didn't go all the way on that one. I just mm -hmm. kind of got most of the way. The, um, you just want to make sure when you're tightening these screws down that you don't over tighten because it's plastic and you'll strip the holes. So don't you're not you're so not. So right now down I'm pretty hard. much there, mm -hmm. and once I feel restriction mm -hmm. like a stopping point, I'm not going to go any further. Same with this one, turning, 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 and uh, hitting a stopping point. Okay. You don't want to keep cranking because you can strip the hole, and then you can also warp this thing. Okay. Because it'll pull it in and it'll cause this thing to maybe leak eventually. Okay. Are there a couple things to look at inside the yes. machine? So that is basically how you clean and maintain your brew group, you know, greasing, cleaning, and all the other stuff. Now, now the would you ever just soak the whole brew group in something? Um, I mean, you could, probably with Kefiza. Yeah. You know, a little tub of water and Kefiza. You don't want it to use dish soap. You don't want it to use a dishwasher. Right. Uh, it causes problems, but you can use. Well, it like, could help loosen up some yeah. really tough coffee. Glue you can or use Kefiza and uh, you know hopefully loosen up some any like like on that one that has the coffee debris that's kind of like filmed on here. Okay. It might clean that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, it's not really necessary. You just want to rinse it off weekly, uh, mm -hmm. and then do this brew group uh, lubrication and cleaning depending on usage, like I said earlier. Okay, so inside the machine, what should we be aware of? So here? inside the machine, we have the compartment that holds the brew group. Um, before you put it in, make sure that this flag is up, like I mentioned flag earlier. Flag is up. The Show flag. me that one more time, just how and how. So it's normally it's like this in the machine. Mm -hmm. When you hit the trigger over here to pull the brew group out, that pops up. Okay. Helps you remove and locks the mechanism. Okay. If it's in the down position, when you go to put the brew group back in the machine, this tab right here mm -hmm. is going to hit a spot in and here. And it won't let you put it it'll, back it'll in. It'll just clunk around and you're like, what the heck? You so know? That, <laughs> that little tab needs to be up. So yeah, definitely make sure that's up. And then once it's up, you can slide it and lock it in. And depending on which which machine you have, that could be not yellow like that. Yes. This is, okay. Yeah, this is only on newer, newer brewing nets. For some reason, they started using yellow mixers. Okay. Um, what else should we be aware most of? Most of them here? have the black, black components all over it. Okay. So in here, you have a little tray that you can clean out. Depending uh, on the machine, it might look a little different. Yeah, they're or slightly different on all the different kinds. This is an anima specifically. Mm -hmm. But on all machines, there's this thing called back here where my finger is pointing. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. 
It's got the little red O-rings around it there? Right there, yep. yep. Um, there's two O-rings on it, and it's always a good idea. No, you know, There's no mention of it anywhere, but I'm going to point it out. You're going to want to add a little lubrication on these two O-rings. So we're going to use this guy here? Yep, we're going to mm -hmm. use the brush like we did with the brew unit, and you're just going to fish around and kind of get a little bit of grease on there and this is food safe grease so it's not going to hurt anything mm -hmm. and you're just going to want to get a little bit of grease just not enough. gobs right just yeah, the just, coating just like the other o-ring i was mentioning earlier you want to just kind of coat it a little bit okay um if you do get a little bit too much on there don't worry about it. it's not going to hurt anything um if you want an easier way to get to that and add grease on it there's usually this little plate that has three screws you can remove the plate mm -hmm. and get to it a lot easier and okay. then put your plate back in okay but yeah, I definitely want to grease this up. Okay. More likely when you're servicing your brew group. Now you don't have to do it all the time. Okay. Now what about, there's a, there's a secret little hole sort of back oh, in yeah. there, right? Yeah. So the yeah. reason why the kit, this brew group service kit, has a pipe cleaner in it mm -hmm. uh, is to help you clean this area out here. Now, I'm going to move this tray on this right. one. All of them are so slightly different, might not have this or whatever. But down here, in the bottom... Mm -hmm. where this thing is pointing at is a mm -hmm. drainage hole. So it goes through up into there, right? For this, this area here, because this area will get water in it from, you know, the back pressure of this once the cup removes itself from the brew unit from here. A few drips of water. Yeah, okay. and then there's a, a valve in the back here, mm -hmm. which you can't see, but when you get done brewing, the solenoid opens and releases the pressure of water into here. Okay. So it's not like spraying all over around here somewhere. And that hole's going to guide it down into your drip tray, And it's right? going to guide it into this chamber area where the drainage has to go here. Mm -hmm. What can happen is this can get built up with residue, mm -hmm. coffee grinds, whatever it may be. For some reason, at some point in time, this might get a buildup in it. And it'll cause a blockage, and it won't allow the, the water to leak out the bottom here. And what will happen is it'll cause a blockage, and the water will eventually fill up to this line right here. And then start flowing And over. start flowing over. And when it does, on certain machines, this one not specifically because it has a big tray, mm -hmm. uh, will go all around the tray or under the tray, and it'll eventually come out the bottom of the machine, and you'll think your machine has a leak when it actually is just this. A plugged hole. So yep. with a pipe cleaner, we're going to... With a pipe cleaner, you're just going to, however you can work with it, you're just going to... Find that hole. You can and, see oh, how see it pulled through. Yep. See. So as long as you can, you know move stuff around and get it to flush out and sometimes you might want to just pour a little water in there after you Make get it sure. to break up and it'll yeah. flush it out but yeah basically you just want to however you want to use that pipe cleaner but you want to poke around in there and get it cleaned out as much as possible if that's blocked up okay 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 anything else we should know here is no it pretty, pretty um, much covered yeah pretty much uh, just you know like i said earlier in the video um Ne needing to do this uh, is very important um, to m the function of your machine and preventing problems. Um, and how often, it depends on how often you use your machine, of course. Yeah. So You're saying earlier, it's like, how often do I wash my car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. There's my no needs a like washing you right now. Every two weeks, it's like if you're driving through a lot of mud, maybe you do it more often, you know? Yeah. So, um, I don't know why I couldn't get that in. <laughs> Flag's not up. Flag's not up. There we go. Good um, demo. So. so, yeah, maintenance on this is very important. Just as long as you follow what I just went over, you'll hopefully not have any problems with your machine. All right, Ted, thanks so much for taking us through the brew group maintenance and the anatomy we had earlier <laughs> if you joined us later in the video. So. Yeah, hopefully that helps people understand how it works a little bit more. All right.